question all the way from Scandinavia. Cool. So Jane Doe asks, I would like to ask if you have a recipe or a guide to extract THCA resin so I can make a tincture for my Dravet boys. I live in Europe where we still do not have the 20 to 1 strains available, and since Australians use THCA for Dravet with success, I thought that I would try the same. There are many mothers here in Europe who could do with a lecture on extracting THCA resin. Okay, um, great question. So let me back up a little bit and explain what THCA is. Um, we're going to record another video on decarboxylation and that one is probably worth reviewing as well. But the, the raw plant material of a typical cannabis plant is rich in THCA. It's a cannabinoid acid. Um, and when you expose it to enough heat, it decarboxylates and becomes THC. THCA is not able to cross the blood-brain barrier, whereas THC is. So THCA is non-psychoactive. Um, it actually appears to have a lot of the properties of CBD in that it's not psychoactive, and it, it, for a lot of people it treats epilepsy, treats a lot of different conditions. It's, and unlike CBD, which is still quite rare, um, and in some places completely not available, THCA is everywhere. I mean, you know, a raw flower you can just drop in your smoothie and that's THCA. Now, just drying the plant causes some uh, decarboxylation. Aging the plant causes decarboxylation. Exposure to any heat at all causes decarboxylation. So just because you haven't intentionally decarboxylated the plant doesn't mean no decarboxylation has occurred. But typically, you know, you're looking at like maybe 5% decarboxylation. So there's still very, very small amounts. And it's a very good option. It's definitely something worth pursuing. So the the first people to really pursue the, the raw cannabis options were really into juicing. And there's still a whole juicing movement that is quite popular. Now, if you're just keeping a plant in veg, and which means having it have more than 12 hours of light every day so that it doesn't begin flowering, you can every day or every couple days harvest some leaves, throw them in a juicer, and that'll create a juice. If it's a high CBD plant, you might get um, say 100 milligrams of CBD per or CBDA rather per ounce of juice. If it's a high THC plant, same thing just with THCA. It's going to be you know roughly 100 milligrams per per ounce. If you're if you're juicing flowers, that can be quite a bit higher, but. Typically, the raw juicing option isn't particularly um, useful to people just because it's not an easy thing to do. If you're not growing it yourself, it's not easy to source fresh plant material like that. And usually what's available to people is a bag of dried flowers. And that can still be used. And it's just not like typically you would throw that in a smoothie or something like that. Now, even that... In, the thing that's cool about the raw options is you can have a much higher dose. And unlike... THC where you know you, you typically don't want more than like a hundred milligrams and often especially for a child you want a whole lot less than that with THCA because it's non psychoactive you can do like 600 to a thousand milligrams and that's a much higher dose and that's you know if I, if I had cancer or some serious illness that's what I would be pursuing I'd be pursuing a raw option like that and the best way to do that is like this person described a tincture or some kind of concentrate and Concentrates allow you to have, you know, in just a lot of cannabinoids without a bunch of the raw material that comes along for the ride. So you, you don't need to drink 10 ounces of raw juice. You can take, you know, a couple little cannabis pills or a tincture under the tongue. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. So that, that's the background. Now to actually answer the question. In terms of how best to make something like a tincture, you're talking about in taking the cannabinoids, the, the little trichomes, and separating them from the plant material. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Ice hash is a good one, um, bubble hash. The, any, any method of making a concentrate that doesn't expose it to heat is really good. Um, also cold oil infusions, they take a long time, but they totally work. Like you can just have a, a bunch of jars of different types of oil in your fridge and just soak cannabis in it. And it's, you know, it, typically you wanna leave it for a month or more in there, but it's not gonna go bad as long as it's refrigerated and it's slowly infusing into there. Um, there. There's a bunch of different other options and we're, we're gonna make a whole bunch of videos and, of different types of concentrates and infusion methods and really anything that doesn't expose it to heat is, is the way to go about doing that. And they're all very promising. Um, particularly for Dravet, there's, it's, 
in Canada and the U.S. right now, there's this big hype about CBD being used to treat Dravet, and it's incredible how effective it is in most cases, and, you know, it's very exciting. But there's, there's a real dark side to that in that it's incredibly expensive and hard to source CBD, and some people can't find it at all. Many people simply can't afford it, and that's just beyond awful. And I do keep hearing these reports of some people, particularly, it, it hasn't really caught on in the U.S. and Canada, but... I've heard a lot of reports out of Australia and some reports from Europe, and there are some reports from Canada and the U.S., where THCA is also extremely effective, and that's a lot cheaper and a lot easier to access. And if that, you know, if that can be made to work, holy, that's like, that's a, that's an incredible breakthrough that, you know, is definitely worth pursuing. So I, I hope to hear back from everyone who's tries this and let us know how it goes, but it's, yeah, best of luck to you. All right, thank you. Thank you.